In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Moses looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God said further, I am the God of your fathers the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. But Moses said to God, If I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said further, Thus 
you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the, go the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial for all generations. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as example for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did, and do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel 
according to Luke. Jesus was teaching the crowds. Some of those present told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, leave it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. I can never read this first reading from the book of Exodus without hearing in my mind the words and sounds of Cecil B. DeMille's famous movie, now so old, The Ten Commandments. It picks up with Moses. Moses was born 400 years almost into the slavery of the Hebrews in Egypt. And he was born at a time of genocide because of the threat of the multiplication of the Hebrews. The Pharaoh decided that only girls would be allowed to live and baby boys would be put to death. But the mother of Moses gave her son every chance she could, kept him secret as long as she could and when she could do so no longer, prepared a bit of a pitch or bitumen basket, kind of tar basket, and put him on the Nile and hoped someone would find him and show him mercy. And through God's providence, one of the many daughters of the household of the Pharaoh found him and adopted him and raised him as her own. She even let him go back out to be nursed and he ended up being nursed by his own mother before being taken after being weaned into the royal household, where he would have been trained along with so many others to become minor functionaries in the state of Egypt, trusted because they were members of the broad extended family of the leadership of Egypt. And as an adult, one day when he saw an Egyptian strike a Hebrew slave, Something rose up in his blood, some recognition that this was his blood that was being struck, and he killed the Egyptian. Even for a member of the household of the Pharaoh, and there were hundreds of them, this was a capital crime. And he hoped no one would know, but the word started to get out. And so he left, and he went out into the desert, leaving his whole way of life behind him, and eventually came across some women, daughters of the priest of Midian, Jethro, and they were watering their flock, 
and he assisted them, was brought home, given hospitality, and eventually married one of those girls. His old life was behind him. Now he was living a simple life with a man who had enough flocks to have a certain comfort as a nomadic way of life. But God was not done with Moses. And so one day when he is out looking after the flocks, he sees a strange sight. It's near Mount Horeb. We know it more familiarly as Mount Sinai. He sees a bush that's on fire, but keeps on burning and is not consumed. And he goes over to see what this was. And he hears the voice, Moses, Moses, remove the sandals from your feet, for you are standing on holy ground. And then the voice, who is the voice of God, identifies himself further. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. These were the patriarchs who had lived 400 years earlier. And Moses, maybe not as much as some of his Hebrew brothers and sisters, would have heard about these patriarchs and the promise given to them of freedom, a great multitude, and a promised land. And so what does Moses do? He hides his face because he is afraid to look on the face of God. And then God gives him a command that would be the rest of his life. I want you, Moses, to go back into Egypt and to lead my people to freedom and to bring them to the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. What does that mean, milk? It means animals and honey. It means plants that are growing. It means that the people will be able to eat off of their own soil, their own flocks, their own agriculture. And then Moses is afraid. If I go to the people, they'll think I'm crazy. That's ultimately what he's saying. Who am I to tell them is sending me? And what does God say? God enters into a very intimate relationship with Moses and with his people, he tells them his proper name. I am who I am. In Hebrew, Eya, Asher, Eya. I am who I am. Eventually it will be shortened and changed a bit to Yahweh. Eya, Asher, Eya. I am who I am. Go to them and tell them that Eya is the one I am, the one who is sending you. This is my name forever. By this name will I be known for all generations. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, in his constant rejection of war and his daily work and prayer on behalf of refugees as he provides for them and finds safe passages for them and as he consecrates the people of Ukraine and Russia to Mary on March the 25th, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercession and protection of St. Joseph, patron of our country, as we celebrate his feast and as the millions of Canadians threatened by inflation and profiteering seek his aid and as our Aboriginal groups prepare to meet Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Christian, beginning the ninth year of his Episcopal ministry, and as he renews his prayers and energies in drawing our diocesan family more closely together through Jesus, who brings us to the Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people still suffering lingering effects of COVID and its impact on our health care system, and for all the sick in need of prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women who respond generously to the needs in the poor, the discouraged, lonely, and may some of these see in their generous response the seed of a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Shirley Cook, Ronald Roy, Nancy McLaughlin, Gary Kelly, Brian McCarthy, Deborah Beckingham, Colonde Teresa, Francis Berry, Olive Dunn, Carolyn Stewart, Roy Brito, and for families and friends who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. We bring all of our needs and our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them and to answer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And let us be seated while our offering is gathered.
and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we, who beseech pardon for our own sins, may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters, and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clay. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, cup we, proclaim we proclaim your death, o Lord, until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Arnold Dobson, Virginia Mabalot, John and Teresa O'Keefe, Malcolm and Daniel Cobham, Doug Hebert, Ralph Howlett Sr., and Ronald Z. Jr. Grant that they, who were united with your son, in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command. And formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what has been brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and bow your heads. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and go in peace.